Hello folks, Dick Fairburn here. Still in my series of fighting rifle cartridges, we've really covered most of the ones that were fighting rifle cartridges. But there's one I need to talk about that was really designed as a hunting cartridge, but it's a crossover that can be very good for people who live in Second Amendment restricted states. If you can't have a semi-auto in your state, you can still have a lever action. Let's talk about the 3030 Winchester and what it can do for us as a fighting rifle. In my last video, I talked about pistol caliber carbines, how good they are for self-defense, home defense. They're pretty dangerous out to 100 yards or a little bit more in the Magnum pistol calibers. And of course, those generally come in lever action rifles. If you need a little bit more power and a little bit more reach than you might get from a 357 Magnum or 44 Magnum lever gun, what about the 3030? It's a step up the power curve. It's been an effective deer, antelope, bear, maybe even up to the size of elk with the right bullets and close range. Been an effective hunting cartridge for quite a while. There are literally millions of these things out there. Marlin made them. Henry makes them. Winchester made them and still makes them. There are a lot of variations out there. Now there are a lot of other carbine cartridges that we could talk about. 35 Remington, things of that sort. There's an almost endless list, but by far the most popular in this country is 3030. And one advantage I see is that a month or so before hunting season around the country, a lot of times they put 3030 ammo on sale. It's still not like buying 556 stuff, but you can get a halfway reasonable price and you can stock up a couple of hundred rounds to have. In terms of power, I mentioned that both the 300 Black or the 300 Whisper and the 7.62x39 are a little bit below the 3030 on the power curve. Most 3030s come in probably 20 to 22 inch barrels, and that's that's part of their gain in power. When you throttle them back to a 16 inch trapper barrel, like you're liable to see on the 7.62x39 or the 300 Black, the 3030 will generally gain 100 to 150 feet per second over the 7.62x39, given the same bullet weight. So it's going to start a 150 grain bullet from most lever actions at about 2,400 feet per second. That means when you zero that load at 100 yards, it's only going to drop 3 inches at 150 and 9 inches at 200 yards. So it's viable for a 150 yard cartridge, maybe a little bit beyond. Now with the side ejection models like the Marlin or the Henry, you can easily mount red dot sights, even magnification scopes if you want them, although uh, to me a magnified scope on a lever action just doesn't seem right somehow. But I've, I'm at the point where that no magnification red dot or um, EOTech, I think I could get along with that. A section of Picatinny rail can be mounted on a magazine tube underneath any of these rifles where you can mount a flashlight or what I have is a flashlight green laser combination so that I have nighttime aiming capabilities. I have two carbines and I, I mentioned to you in the 357 Magnum and 44 Magnum. I've gone through several 3030s over the years and by the time I get them slicked up and shooting really good somebody decides they want them and offers me a lot of money. So at the moment I don't have a 3030 but that's not to say I won't have another one in the foreseeable future. Adding into this is the fact that lever actions are selling so well and are being looked at for this mission so much that the companies are building tactical style lever guns now. Synthetic stocks with M-lock attachments, Picatinny rail. A lot of other people are looking at this 30 as a fighting instrument and it can be a very good one. Now if you don't want to put an optic on your lever gun, either a top eject or a side eject, you might want to look at a better set of sights because most of these came with the, the mid-barrel buckhorn or semi-buckhorn rear sight. 
and generally a front sight with a bead on it, silver or gold bead. And while they're very common and a lot of people love them, uh, they work really good for cowboy shooting on the pistol caliber carbines. I don't like them for work at 100 yards or more for a couple of reasons. An aperture sight, a ring sight on the back, as close to your eye as you can get it, is called a ghost ring sight. And the advantage is it that you can look through that peep and just ignore it. Your eye will center the front sight naturally in the middle of that peep, so it's very fast to use. And a good wide peep on the back lets in a lot of light, so it's going to work as, you know, as a low light condition as we can with sights. The reason I don't like the bead sight is because the center of that bead is generally your aiming point. And if your target is very large at all, or very distant, the bead may cover up most of the target. The Patridge front sight gives you an image of just a square post. So the top of that post and the center of the width is your very much more precise aiming point than you can get with a bead that's going to cover a lot of stuff up. And that combination of a ghost ring rear with a Patridge front sight, I think, is both the fastest system you can get and the most accurate. And I'll embed some pictures here to show you some of the examples that I have. One way to mount that rear peep is, is to mount it across the rails. XS sights have some uh, sights for lever actions that can mount on the top of the side ejectors or can mount on the rails of the top ejectors and uh, give you a really nice ghost ring there at the back. Another way, on an 1886 carbine I have, I have a Williams side mount and Lyman makes them as well. Most of those rifles are drilled and tapped on the side so that you can mount that base which goes up over the top and provides you with peeps. And you can screw in various sizes of peeps. The best thing to do, in my opinion, is just screw that insert out and use the great big threaded hole. That, that works perfectly as a ghost ring sight. Sights with a little bit of marking other than black can help you see them under difficult conditions. A number of companies used to make what are called sourdough sights. They're a little hard to find nowadays. That's that Patridge square shape or rectangular shape. But at the top, they've got a little bit of a 45 degree angle and usually a, an insert of brass in there. And you can use Brasso or something and keep that nice and bright and shiny. And that will help you see it better under dark conditions. The black shows up under light conditions, so it's a more useful sight. XS sights that I mentioned for rear sights, they have a front sight that has a white stripe up the middle of it. So it's black with a white stripe. And either that black outside or the white inside will show up against almost anything that you're going to put those sights on. Even Jeff Cooper, in his book, The Art of the Rifle, which I think might have been his last book, and I'll pat myself on the back here. I was working for Paladin Press at the time. I had police rifles out and was working on my second book, Building a Better Gunfighter. And uh, I've had people contact me wanting to get copies of, of the Gunfighter book. The paper copies are gone. It uh, hopefully within a few weeks I will have both uh, both of my books up on my website. They'll be available for purchase as ebooks. Uh, but when Jeff Cooper's book, The Art of the Rifle, came out at Paladin Press, the uh, the editor sent me a copy of the proof sheets of the book and asked me if I would do a review for the back cover. So I got to put my name on the back cover of Jeff Cooper's rifle, which is quite an honor. Cooper loved the 3030. He thought it was a great balance of power with very easy to handle recoil. And at one time, I'm not sure if they still do, but at one time the uh, pro shop at Gunsight Ranch made a Winchester 94 with the ghost ring sights and tuned up the way they thought it should be for a 3030 as a fighting rifle. So it's not just my goofy self that, that thinks it's a good round. Even though it was designed as a hunting rifle, it was one of the very first smokeless cartridges and it's always been a very good performer. This example here happens to be the Hornady with the FTX, it's called Lever Revolution. And this soft tip will not set off a primer in a, in a magazine tube, yet the bullet is a lot more pointed. If you run out the trajectory tar charts, it helps a little bit. What it really helps with is carrying more energy further out, really. It doesn't, it, it helps with the trajectory, but it's not major. But 150 grain, 170 grain have always been the standard soft point loads for the 3030. Either of those will do a great job. And as I say, you can get it on sale before hunting season every year and, and maybe stock up some. 
So the rifles are out there. To go buy a, a good lever action 3030 now, you're looking well over a thousand dollars. And I will I will say that if you think you're going to go buy a 3030 as your fighting rifle, I would say spend less and get an AR-15, or maybe spend the same amount over a thousand dollars or so and get a really good AR-15. But you may have that 3030 stuck in a closet somewhere, or you may have an uncle or a grandfather who no longer uses it. I've been looking for a couple of years. A friend of mine found a really beat up one at a gun show one time. The bore was bright. The, the mechanics of the rifle worked fine. But because it was pretty beat up and rusty on the outside, it wasn't very expensive. So he got it, cleaned it up a little bit. He's got a really nice little spare fighting rifle. And I'll find one that way someday too. So keep that in mind. Lever action designs where you can't use semi-autos, can't even buy semi-autos. Till the Supreme Court makes things different. The lever action may be the way to go. And if you need more power than a 357 Magnum or 44 Magnum pistol caliber carbine, then the 3030 is a great answer. Not a big video here. I just I want to promote that concept to you. A lot of hunters, a lot of gun folks have a 3030 laying around somewhere. So that's a good way to get started in rifle protection for your home, for your family, for your farm. In the next video, I'm going to add some other calibers to the list of ARs. I talked about the 5.56 and the 300 Black. I've had a lot of people write in and say, oh, you're going to cover the 300 Hammer, or what about the 6.8 SPC? All of those were kind of flash-in-the-pan cartridges. None of them have, have gained a, a big section of the uh, market that I'm aware of. But I'm going to kind of go down that list. I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about some other rounds that are available for the AR platform. And at, so I don't insult anyone and, and leave anyone out. And some of them have some merit. So they're worth looking at. Folks, I appreciate you watching these videos. And I want you to be safe out there. So take care. And I'll see you on the next video. Okay, we've got them both here now. You ready? Bud got one. Ginger got one. Uh-huh. Oh, she missed it. She usually gets them, doesn't she, bud? Mm -hmm. Okay, girl. Last one. You ready? You ready? Yeah. That's all there is till next time.